Today's scripture reading is taken from Esther, chapter 4, verses 1 to 17. Before that, let's read together the prayer for illumination. Together, Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Esther 4, chapter, Esther chapter 4, verse 1. When Mordecai learned of all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the city, wailing loudly and bitterly. But he went only as far as the king's gate, because no one clothed in sackcloth was allowed to enter it. In every province to which the edict and order of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping and wailing. Many lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's eunuchs and female attendants came and told her about Mordecai, she was in great distress. She sent clothes for him to put on instead of his sackcloth but he would not accept them. Then Esther summoned Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs assigned to attend her, and ordered him to find out what was troubling Mordecai and why. So Hathak went up to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. Mordecai told him everything that had happened to him including the exact amount of money Haman had promised to pay into the royal treasury for the destruction of the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the text of the edict for their annihilation, which had been published in Susa, to show to Esther and explain it to her. And he told him to instruct her to go into the king's presence to beg for mercy and plead with him for her people. Hatek went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, All the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that they be put to death unless the king extends the gold scepter to them and spare their, spares their lives. But 30 days have passed since I was called to go to the king. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. If I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hope that you all have not uh, those off, yeah? Okay, pastor gave you all the homework, boycott, complaining. That was uh, the first, what, the two points that pastor gave us. Joy is a result of hope in us. Second one, happiness is dependent on the circumstances around us. Correct or not? Oh, okay. Happiness is dependent on the circumstances around us. We had our uh, DG on Thursday, then we had a short survey and most of all most of us agreed that 
it's not easy lah pastor's second point lah happiness is dependent on the circumstances around us surely our mood will be affected and honestly even as I stand here I can also tell you that I'm not saying that I'm in a bad mood but I'm saying that I'm very concerned of the circumstances or the happenings that I see around or uh, happening in our nation 100 over days have passed people just gone missing like that 100 over days and there is still no news and the news that we get seems so misleading so to say that we can still be joyful or really happy not bothering about the circumstances around us not being affected personally I myself find it difficult I'm not saying that pastor sermon is not correct I'm saying that I myself struggle to see you know we know that God is sovereign but as we look around the happenings that are ongoing in our country in the world things are so unpredictable anything anytime can happen sometimes I have to be honest it does affect me the circumstances around me do affect me and I think what is happening now even as we look at the book of Esther is quite similar you know things can be happening around and yet God is sovereign but how we look at these circumstances probably may be of help to us let's go to the background of the book of Esther a bit the book of Esther is around the happenings around 480 BC is about 30 years before the events that were written in the book of Nehemiah and of course we know Esther was in the her rule was during the Persian uh, Empire which lasted, lasted about 200 years just after the uh, Babylonian and I think the Babylonian is one of the greatest but in terms of area in terms of coverage I think the Persian is slightly bigger and of course after them came the Greeks and the Romans and interestingly the book of Esther is one of the two books apart from Ruth whereby God's name was not mentioned straightforward or outrightly in both these books but yet as we look at the theme of both these two books we can see God's sovereignty over the nation God's sovereign sovereignty over the Israelites and even as we pray every day yeah God your sovereign over Malaysia sometimes we also get excited what is happening general election is coming what is going to be but friends as we look at our situation now let us remember that thousands of years ago similar situation uh, was there as well sometimes when we look at the book of Esther we may think it's like a story like a I won't say cartoon story it's like a novel how many of you all watch uh, Korean dramas serial Chinese drama Indonesian Filipino drama serial? can I see your hands up I see you one or two ladies smiling all secret and I cannot show uh, okay very honest so few uh. I thought all ladies watch Korean drama so at one glance we look at it sometimes the book of Esther looks like or appears to be like like a drama like that you no know, betul ke tak betul we look at the events that occur one so many coincidences so many happenings that it looks a bit you know not so real yeah and even the appointment of Esther as queen you know it's estimated there were about 50 million people spread throughout the Persian Empire from the modern day Pakistan right to Libya and there were about 15 million Jews out of that 50 uh, million people so in percentage wise it's about 30 percent so you look at Malaysia you know we've got 30 million how many percent A how many percent B how many percent C and Esther out of that 50 million Jews she was chosen to be queen so it looks like betul ka tak betul lah. the only thing that I can imagine is that you know one of my favorite actress uh, is actually Elizabeth Taylor and I think you all know how how pretty Elizabeth Taylor was right when we were young you know we used to buy these uh, magazines Galaxy uh, you know we, we, we buy for two weeks or three weeks and then we get a free poster and I tell you Elizabeth Taylor was one of those posters that I hung in my, my, my room or we brought to school. Elizabeth Taylor, Jacqueline Smith, uh, Farah Fawcett, you know like young boys. Huh? So I could imagine that how beautiful is, uh, Esther could have been, being a Jew. And the other 
uh, lady that I thought was a Jew but came to prominence was I think Jacqueline Kennedy. Yeah. So we look at how beautiful a, a Jewish girl can be. All right. Looking at the circumstances again, the edict has been given that all the Jews are su supposed to be destroyed. But what I had in mind to share this morning is that as we look at the things that are happening around us, please remain calm or be assured that God is still sovereign. And there are a few characters in this so-called, um, I would say, drama, not drama, the, uh, the story that unfolds. We have Mordecai, one of the government officials who happened to be a uh, cousin of uh, Esther. And Esther herself was an orphan and she was brought up by Mordecai who's supposed to be about 15 to 20 years older than Esther. And we have Haman, the Agagite. Three, four times the word Agagite was mentioned in the book of Esther. And of course, we have Hatak, the king's eunuch, and Esther herself. These are the few main characters that we see coming out in the first few chapters of uh, Esther. In fact, the whole book of Esther. And I can understand why the Persians or people like Haman, of course, they've got old scars to settle. Maybe I'll share another sermon on uh, uh, Haman. But we look at the racial tension. Out of 15 million, 15 million Jews from the exiles, probably they are doing very well in the country. Economically, probably they were owning good businesses. And that is why Haman came up with the idea to the king that, you know, if we can uh, finish off all the Jews, I will pay a few uh, pounds or a few kilograms of silver. I think what he had in mind was to confiscate the property of the Jews and then to put into the straight state treasury. And it's estimated that if he were to do that, that amount of silver is about two-thirds of the total income of the entire Persian Empire. That's so much of money. So you can imagine, as you look around us, even in countries like Indonesia, anywhere, whenever there's a racial tension that comes out, a certain race will be zeroed in. Yeah, they are the ones that uh, are, are good in business and they are the ones that control the economy. So I think similarly, the Jews would have faced such situation. Yeah, the Persians were not happy with them because they were doing quite well economically. And as we look at the various characters, I can't help but to think that God is sovereign and that leads us to point number one, which is God accomplishes his plans and purpose. God accomplishes his plans in different ways. He uses different people. He uses different situations. So, you look at Esther. She was put in a certain place for a certain purpose. In this instance, to be the queen, to be the wife of the king, King Zexus. Yeah? And it's not easy, like I mentioned. Out of 50 million Jews, to be selected to be the queen for a king that controls such vast areas, such a great empire. And Esther was there at the correct time, correct timing. She was in a position whereby she had access to the king, although in a certain sense that she has to be called into the king's presence. Only then she would be able to see the king. God in place, certain places, God also uses people who are in power, in position, or even not in position. Normal people, people are in authority, even a normal rakyat, or people who are seated on the throne, someone like Esther. And maybe in today's context, the rakyat, yeah, we may not be so um, influential as Esther, or someone influential as the Prime Minister, or even uh, the assistant to the Prime Minister, but we may know someone close who have close connection, just like um, his uncle here. He knows Esther and he had access to the king. And when we look at Mordecai and when we look at Esther, they were in a situation for Queen Esther. She was in a situation of good life, 
in a sense. Although to be the queen, to be the king's wife may not be easy, but comparatively to a commoner, she was definitely far much better. You don't have to worry about food, you don't have to worry about your clothing, everything has been, have been taken care of. But at the same time, when you look at the rakyat, they were, God also used them because Esther requested that all the Jews spread all over to fast for her as she approaches the king. Friends, as we look around our country, as we look around the world, let us try to understand the times and the seasons that we are in. We can be anywhere, we can be any place, we can be in any position. Position of power, position of not so much power, or even position with no power. God has placed each and every one of us in a certain place now for a specific purpose. It can be different roles that we play wherever we are. You see, humanly speaking, sometimes if we have done well in our professional career, in our business, we may think that, yeah, I work hard all my life. Yeah, from a simple uh, mechanic, I've now become a second-hand car dealer and now I own one of the largest chain of uh, branded car. We may think that, yeah, it's because me, me, me. I'm not saying that we don't have to work hard. I'm not saying that we don't have to study in order to do well in our professional career. Good, God has blessed all of us in different ways. But I think we need to understand that all these things can be used for God's kingdom. And when I was preparing this message, one of the uh, best example that I can think of, our localized example, is that uh, there's a group of people, they call themselves Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship. I'm not promoting, yeah? I'm just saying that what they've done. Because personally, I have benef benefited from their ministry. Yeah, they call themselves Full Gospel Businessmen, but they, the members comprise of professionals, businessmen, and also even simple people like government servants, teachers, and a few names which I can remember very clearly in the 90s, people like Dr. Eddie Chong, Dr. Sim, Dr. Kwan, and also government teachers like David Lim. And now we have our Malacca president, Patrick Tan. And what they did was, they used their, I won't say position, they used their officers, they used their clinics to have prayer meetings during the afternoons. And at night, they had uh, speakers, invited speakers to come all over, people like Vernon Falls, Dash Short, Bill Subrisky, coming all over from Australia, from New Zealand, to share the gospel, to reach out to those who have not known Christ yet. And even, I think, in the late 80s, there's one uh, man who's very active, was very active in full gospel. I think many of us will know Dr. Peter Tong. He runs a clinic somewhere in Ampang Park because I had to, to do my medical checkup there when I was working in KL. And he too used his clinic to do such work. So I think they understood, the members of the Full Gospel Businessmen, they understood that they had been given such a position and they had such means to do what they were called to do. That is, to use their clinics, to use their business premises, to use their financial resources to reach out to those who have not known Christ yet. And even if we are just simple teachers, if we may not be members of Full Gospel Businessmen. We may be teachers in schools, principals, or just a caretaker or a lab attendant in school. God has put you there for a specific plan to reach out to the students, to be the salt and the light in the school. But sometimes, historically, not many Christian teachers who have been placed in Christian schools, schools like ACS or even SFI, I'm talking about my time, yeah? We have had many Christian teachers placed in those schools, but when there's a vacancy for a CF teacher, no, none of the Christian teachers would want to volunteer to be the teacher advisor. And especially so, if the school has not had the CF for a long time, and if that particular teacher were to spearhead to see the principal and to ask for permission for CF to be revived again, sorry, I will never do it because if I langgar the principal, then all my melintang and menegar or whatever will be gone because I will be in the 
black books of the principle. Friends, church, we have been placed in a certain place for a specific reason and a specific purpose. Can we try to understand that it is important and it is by God's grace that we have been at that particular place at that particular time. But of course, we can choose to ignore point number two. Verse 14 it says, If you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. Without mincing his words, Mordecai told Esther straight forward, I mean, you know, in saying that, yeah, you don't want also can. You can choose to ignore, but there will be a consequence. If you fail to act, God can still use someone. God can still use some other ways or avenues. Because God is God, He can do things which we cannot imagine. Yeah? And I think Mordecai has got his theology very right. He knows that God is sovereign and that no matter how, God will still keep the Jewish race. God will still keep the Jewish nation. And that is why, even as she, he has challenged Esther to do certain things, that is to approach the king, even though he knows that in case Queen Esther does not want to do, he knows that God will still do something else. But at the end of the day, if Queen Esther ignores, then she will be the one who will be at a loss. She may probably die herself, her family may also be annihilated, or, of course, she will also miss on the big blessings that God has in store for her. She will miss, she will not leave that legacy as compared to her obedience in following what God has wanted her to do. Friends, when God placed you and I in a particular place, we must understand that it is God who put us. We need to understand. We need to recognize. If we choose to ignore, then we will miss the chance that God has uh, given unto us. We will be out of His plan and we will miss His blessings that God has in store for us. So we look around us in the church here, in the nation, in the state. What is your role actually? You can be in your family by just being a simple uh, daughter-in-law looking care after your fussy mother-in-law. You can be a maid or you can be an employer having maids in the home. You have immediate relatives who are non-believers. You may be put into a home to serve a very grumpy and hot-tempered husband. Or you have been put in a home where your wife can't even cook a simple dish like wok luak, for example. Okay? You still have to tolerate. You still have to carry on. God has placed you in that family for a particular plan, for a particular purpose. And taking one step further, if you have been given a chance to be a GM or a CEO, of course, in our visit visitation team, I have one very good friend that I call her CEO, but I cannot mention her name. She will skin me to death. The next round, she will not blanja me and makan with you know. So if you have been placed in a place whereby you have authority, you are a GM or a CEO of your company, what is your role to help or to shine as a Christian in your home? Do you understand the time, the seasons that God has given you, that particular season of time for you to do something for your colleagues, for your friends in the office? I'm going to tell you a secret which I think I've told Pastor Andrew. In fact, two or three years ago, I won't say I was asked, I was, one of the track pastors asked me, uh, inquired whether I would consider moving to his church to start off a Nepali ministry. So I didn't answer, I looked at him, I just smiled, and then he said, Ayah, this kampung boy, yeah, you don't have your sambal, sambal belacan, ah. how can you come to my, to my state? Ah? I didn't answer. And then the second year, he asked again. The reason why he asked me whether I would join him in his home state was that there was this factory owner, you know, um, who is a Christian, attending his church, 
but has actually renovated the whole room, aircon the place, uh, board chairs, table, including uh, what they call it, LCD projector, to start the Nepali ministry work because he has got about 200 over Nepali workers in his factory. So I think this man, I was connected to the mission chairman of this church, talked to, 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 to this uh, particular gentleman, but to cut the story short, I'm still here, I did not go. But the point I'm trying to say is that this man, uh, this church member, actually designated the whole place, aircon the place without taking into consideration of the cost of the aircon, the capital expenditure, but just set aside this place. And that time, he, don't, he didn't even know whether there were any Christian Nepalese in that particular factory. He just went by faith. And to cut the story short, the Nepali work in that particular church is now ongoing. Now a latest figure is about, about 20 to 30 people and that God has sent a missionary, husband and wife, a couple, to this particular church, Maksaleh, you know, uh, to help out in the migrant ministry, Nepali work in this particular church. So this man understood the times, understood the season that God has given him. This particular position to be the owner of the factory so that he was in a position to start off migrant work amongst the Nepali community in his factory. Of course, the choice is his. He can choose to ignore. If we ignore, God will accomplish his purpose even if we refuse to obey his will. Like in the case of the example I've given. Someone could have approached him to set a, a, a space for the Nepali work. But if he doesn't want, he's still okay. God will say, yeah, the factory is yours. It is still up to you whether you want to or not. And similarly, if Esther, Queen Esther has rejected, God could still raise someone else. God could still use some other channels to bring deliverance to the Jewish people, to the Jewish nation. So, we can still refuse to obey His will, but God's purposes will still be accomplished. Looking back at our local example, sometimes when we look at our church here, or in many churches, we as human beings, we as educated people, people who have experienced or has, you know, we have got our salvation, Sometimes when we talk about service or serving God or you know, just doing something for God, we feel as if that God owes us a favor. That's what I observe. We feel that God owes us a favor and that God's work is at the mercy of my answering to God's call, yes or no. Friends, God will still accomplish His purpose even if we refuse to obey His will. God may call you a thousand times. God may call you a hundred times. God may give you a dream. Jesus may appear in front of your eyes. But yet, you may choose to ignore. But I tell you, friends, if you choose to ignore, don't think that the church will collapse. Don't think that without you or without your service, God's purposes will not be accomplished. I can tell you that God's purposes will still be accomplished if we refuse to obey His will. God doesn't owe us anything. In fact, we owe God. So when we answer God's call to service, when we answer to God's call to do a certain thing, it is out of our act of submission, appreciation, thanksgiving that we say, yeah, God, I'm going to do this project. I'm going to do this. I'm going to serve. I'm going to use part of my resources to do this project, to help the poor, to do this, to do that. It is not so much that, God, yeah, since you ask, okay, la, I give you face, I do this work. It could be as simple as going to a DG, attending a DG. Sometimes when we ask, we invite people to go to DG, huh? it's as if like, you know, like say I were to ask, hey, complain, come now, attend DG. See first lah, you know, it's like, he has to, you know, be so obligated to me, then only he will come. Aren't we like that at times? Huh? Or maybe I change the example. Probably, okay, if Kunroy asked me, 
Denny Marilah kau punya DJ dekat komping sana main rumah Bagus tak ada makan di sini Asyik komping baru panggil kau kau tak mau pergi You know why? Because komping's face so sour I look at him, he never smile But Kun Roy ya, You see, I know I talk also he smile already And then Kun Roy very good you know He and I very ngam Always go to Pak Putra, he belanja me makan uh, What is it lah? Nan Cheese nan I like cheese nan you know And then I and him very all kaliau But never mind, Kundo is very good to me because 10 years ago, you know, when I bought my house, uh, he gave me free uh, legal fees, you know. So he asked me to go DG, I better go. Komping, no lah. Komping give me discount, but he gave me 5% discount only. Apa ni Komping, siap siap. Anyway, Komping give me free legal fees as well. Don't, it's just an example, yeah. Sometimes when God asks us to do something or God invites us to do something, we feel that, yeah, I will do. Because of what? Like obligation or, you know, it's like I have to please God like that. Don't get me wrong. We are all like this. We are emotional people. But don't think that by you not coming or by you not answering to God's call, God's work will collapse. God will accomplish His purpose even if we refuse to obey His will. I'm giving this example because of my own personal life. When I was in Form 5 in 1979, way back in 1979, 78-79, Form 4, Form 5, Mr. Alex Lim was my maths teacher. I think I've quoted this example before. You know, I was so bad at, in my maths because I never do homework. Weekends always go party. Mr. Alex Lim also, our Form 4, Form 5 class were upstairs. Mr. Alex Lim would say, Three. The window not close. Go and jump, lah. Jump, jump. You know. <laughs> the, I wasn't involved in church at all. So sometimes I feel, like, wow, when the MY president invites me to 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 come to church or to come, I I feel so great. You no, know? yeah, I I'm being invited to come. Do you wanna? Where I free? You know, I go. For what I go? This week, Patrick Tio is coming to Day One Hang Tua. They are going to disco, right? Ah, huh? for I go to MY, I feel. As if like, you know, if I go, ah, uh, I'm doing the church, I'm doing MYF a big, big favor, and that was 17, 18 years old, and my life continued to to go astray. Yeah, and the MYF still carried on. Danny Chu tak datang, MYF still jalan. Yeah, but what I miss was people who were younger than me became MYF presidents. People like. Go Kim Tech, Reverend Dr. T. J. Akuma, Simon Wong, Gan Jin Tech. They were all presidents before me, but in age, I was so-called the ayam tua, the older ones. I'm actually about four to five years senior to J. Akuma, but yet he was a president. I mean, he was a MY president before me, and all those who were president before me, they were all younger and. I became the MYF president at the age of 23. 24 is the last age according to the MYF constitution. That is why I said ayam tua. After 25, tak boleh jadi president. I only had the opportunity to become MYF president for one year. The point that I'm trying to say is that yes, we can choose to ignore, but God's purposes will still be done. Without me, MYF still jalan. But I miss the opportunity of Being president for extra one or two years. Many times when God calls us, we give God or we give the people who ask us to do a certain thing, we give them nice religious jargons or spiritual. They say, "Oh, I think it's not God's will lah for me to come to MYF." Yeah. I think it's not God's will lah for me to be an usher. I think it's not God's will yet at this time to come and attend a DG because I did not hear from God. You know, God did not speak to me. Let me pray about it first. Let me ask God whether I should do this or not. By the time we pray, the project pun sudah habis. Yeah, and one of the things that. I passionately wants to do is that to, but I don't think I can get off this project very soon. Ah, to raise up a group of people 
who will really be able to to serve those who are in need in a sense that things like going for attending funeral uh, to give support to the deceased family or even to to bring people to doctors especially those who are alone at home bring them for medical checkup probably they're suffering from cancer or probably they're just immobile to mobilize a group of helpers to help the pastoral team so that yeah so and so is uh, has a medical appointment um, can you help to send yes and to go one step further to even prepare food or even to bathe that particular person to help in whatever way is possible to dirty our hands you know i was speaking to one of our uh, team members who does regularly regular visitation with me he said pastor maybe you announce lah but i said nah i've been announcing i was thinking lah bb captain also i announced for 10 15 years until now also the captain pun tak ada no gb captain also tak ada bb captain also tak ada and now if i want to announce to get helpers to to bathe people or to just clean someone who has just passed out don't know whether can get or not maybe we see how lah i may just make an announcement to get when we look at our surroundings there are so many things so much things to be done are we able to answer god's call you see in acts chapter 13 verse 13 acts 15 you know the story about john mark he left but as we, as we look at the three portions of scripture uh, when uh, john mark left and then paul continued his journey and then there were this agreement between paul and barnabas and at the end of the day paul uh, met up with timothy you see in such situation even when john mark left paul's work paul's missionary paul's sharing of the gospel still continued so never think that without you mission work will not continue never think that without us the church is going to collapse first situation is that god can use some other people or god can still corner us like how he cornered jonah but i think a few scenarios that why we often refuse to obey god's will is that we are not prepared to pay the cost and the things that god wants us to do may not be in our priority list or we are just complacent and we are not interested to execute anything for the good of the church sometimes like in esther's case she, you know it may danger her life sometimes we want to save our own skin like for example if i'm a teacher and my principal is of another uh, religion i would not want to risk my promotion by antagonizing the principal to ask that no 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 you must have a christian fellowship in school otherwise uh, i will complain when that happens i'll be in the bad books and my promotion will be affected yeah friends god can call but we need to answer many of us use mobile phone when there's incoming call we can see okay kunroy his name will be blinking or home wife or darling or whatever you know whatever name that we we save we can choose to answer that call when we choose to answer we will have to do something we have either to press the button or we have to slide in order to receive that call the point i'm trying to say is that when god calls us when god gives you the opportunity we need to answer we need to respond esther queen esther was hesitant in the beginning i won't blame her because of a situation that she was in but many of us we are not in such a dangerous position as us you know and when god calls normally it will be urgent and there is a time frame in legal terms when we do up agreement you know we always say that time is of the essence so we need to understand the times and quickly act after answering god we need to act quickly like esther she was prepared to do what needs to be done even 
to the point of risking her life. And her famous statement, if I perish, I perish. Church, are we willing to answer God's call if we have to sacrifice our life? And when we look at what is happening around the country now, people disappear just like this, so quickly. And we do not know when it's going to happen to someone dear to us. You know, are we still so frightened to speak out, to do something when we look at all these things happening? Or are we just sitting down and wait for others to do? Are we willing to sacrifice for the sake of others? Sounds familiar, yeah? Deep inside, we may have this difficulty. So what are we supposed to do when God calls us? It still depends on us. Friends, we need to answer to God's call. And I think a few things after why Esther was very successful was that she understood the big picture. She wasn't self-centered. Yes, beginning, she was worried. But as she looked at the edict, as she looked at the situation, she knew that it was not about her alone. She knows the consequences that would happen if she did not do what God had wanted her to do. And she could see, she could see the big picture that God has placed her at such a place and at such a time. And then she plucked the courage, her courage. She saw the overall picture. Yes, and she went ahead. She did not wait. She prepared and she strategized. She went to ask for more information about what is happening and then sent her eunuch to Mordecai and Mordecai explained to her. She gathered information and she started to plan. You know, in chapter, the, the following chapters, we see how Queen Esther carefully planned how to approach the king by having two uh, dinners or two luncheons with the king as well as with Haman. Yes, to execute her plan, she needed to, help, uh, to, to get help from the people. She gathered her people to pray. You see, when Queen Esther had all the facts there, she did not wait. She did not procrastinate. She executed her plan straight away, right away. But many of us, when God calls us, we tend to wait. We tend to give answers and we do not want to do the things right away. Sometimes the window or the opportunities to serve can be present for only a short time. After that, God may close the opportunity. This morning as we are seated here, over the last few days, few weeks or even months, what has God been speaking to us? As we look around us, the country, the world, bombings after bombings, things that are happening so unpredictable, we don't know what's going to happen next. What is the thing that God wants you to be doing in your present position, in your present place, whether it's in your family, whether it's in the church, whether it's in your workplace, what is it that God has been speaking to you? And next week, we'll spend a bit of time during, after the worship, we will do a simplified version of uh, to uh, celebrate a day of prayer for the nation, whereby next week we'll be having a few prayer items and we'll be spending some time in prayer for about 5 to 10 minutes to be praying for the nation. Friends, are we just going to be sleeping still or are we going to open our eyes and look at the times and seasons that we are in? Understand the seasons and the times that we are in right now so that we can allow God to accomplish His plans, even though it may be in different ways. Try not to ignore, even though you have the choice. Try to obey His will, even though we know that God will still accomplish His will through other means. Friends, 
Can we make a decision this morning to answer God's call when the time comes? Or maybe even this morning, as we close with the closing song, as we leave this place, ask God to continue to search each and every one of us so that indeed God will be able to use all of us as His instrument. Amen.